This is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision, and in this video we're taking a look at BACnet IP and the TAZI box system, um, and how you can use those two together to facilitate some uh, interesting use cases. So if we take a look at what the scenario is, um, you can see we've got this BACnet IP device out here uh, in this remote site, and we've got a TAZI box lock that it is connected to, and they're both out on the internet through that lock. And then we have a remote supervisor. What we want to do is take that supervisor and connect to the uh, BACnet IP device and pull in our points and be able to discover and, and do all the things that we would ordinarily be able to do if they were on the same physical subnet. So, there's a couple problems here. First is BACnet IP isn't routable uh, unless you use something like a BBMD. The problem with using a BBMD. It's more setup to do, it's more time, there's configuration that you have to do, um, and it's just, ideally we, we shouldn't have to do it. Um, and we also, in our use case here, we don't want to install something like a Jace that maybe you would see otherwise uh, installed at this remote site. Uh, let's say for, for cost reasons, we don't want to install the Jace out here along with the device. We only have maybe this single device or a couple devices, but we still want to pull them back into our supervisor. So what's the solution to this problem? Well, with the Tazi box, you can do something called a layer two connection. So typically your remote connections are by default uh, layer three, which means that you are getting an IP address for your key remotely that's at a different subnet than what your lock or that, that network that you're connecting to is at. Um, a layer two connection essentially gets rid of that and when you make a connection to the lock from your key, your IP address will be on the same subnet as that remote site is. So it basically is as if you have a long cable connecting from your computer, wherever you are in the world, to the site, um, to the LAN side of the site and that lock. So you can get all the features and things that you typically would uh, when you're plugged in physically on the LAN side of a network. So with TaziBox, we can do that. We have the ability to select between the two. So what's that setup look like? Well, first, you're going to go into your remote lock, and you're going to find your key in the list of uh, keys that are associated with the lock, and you're going to change that default from layer 3 to layer 2. And then you'll also uncheck the deny access towards client. Um, that allows some uh, bidirectional um, communication between the devices and the networks. And then in the advanced settings, we're going to uh, check this uh, we're going to uncheck, we're going to check this allow v, uh, VLAN zero pass through. And in my testing, not having that checked uh, prevents uh, discovery from working reliably. So definitely make sure you check that. And then in Niagara, the only thing that we're doing differently is when we set up our backend IP network, we're going to change the adapter so that it's using our virtual adapter that the key software sets up for us. So let's take a look at what that looks like in Niagara. So you can see I'm in Niagara here now and I've got my network, my BACnet network in here and I'm gonna go into my BACnet comms and then I've got just this single IP port in here, and I'm using the TaziBox Tap Windows adapter, which is a virtual uh, network adapter that gives me an IP address that matches what I see out at my site. Now, I've done all the configuration and everything that I talked about before, and, and I'll show you now what that looks like on the TaziBox side. So if I go back to my home screen now for this lock, you can see I've got this device out here on the lock, um, and I want to make those changes that we talked about. So I'm going to go into keys and locks. And you can see this is my key, and I've already changed it from layer 3, which is the default, to layer 2, which is bridged, which will give me that IP address that I expect. I've unchecked this deny access uh, checkbox. And then if we go back up into settings and go to advanced settings, 
we're also going to check this allow VLAN zero pass through. Check that, hit save, and you're good to go. When you go into Niagara now, and I pull up our device manager, and I do a discover, it's gonna go out and do its thing just as we expect it to in a discovery. And we can see that remote device and bring it in just as we always would. So that does it for this video. A little uh, helpful thing. Hopefully you can find some use cases for it uh, with the Tazibox, Tazibox locks uh, and keys. Uh, be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel, Brody Precision. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.